Well, hello, friend, and welcome back to the Joyful Movement Show. This is episode 88, and today I've got a really practical episode planned for you. We're talking all about adding some movement into your workday, because let's face it, we all spend a big chunk of our life at work. And for many of us, that time is spent at a computer, sitting and looking at a screen. And I think we've all heard about the negative effects of prolonged sitting. Some sources even suggest that desk sitting is the new smoking and the risks associated with sitting eight hours a day are similar to the risks of smoking a pack of cigarettes. Now, I don't say that to scare you. I'm not at all into fear mongering, but I just want to increase our awareness about how sitting does have an effect on our physical and mental well-being and we can mitigate that risk by being intentional and reducing our time sitting and adding some simple but targeted movement into our day. Now, most progressive workplaces encourage their employees to move or stand more. They know it's better for employee health and productivity, but at the end of the day, it comes down to you to implement those recommendations and I meet a lot of folks who have all the support from their employer to take care of themselves and move more, but either they don't know what to do or they just kind of forget or they're in a routine, whatever the reason, it just doesn't happen. So on today's episode, I want to give you the knowledge and tools that you need, five very simple tips that you can implement right away so that you can get moving more and feeling better right now. Because the bottom line is sitting at your desk does affect how you feel. It affects your energy and your mood, and it causes a lot of aches and pains. And it really doesn't have to be that way. So before I give you those tips, let's first talk about how prolonged sitting does affect your body. Most notably, sitting for a prolonged period of time affects our circulation. This is where that comparison to smoking comes in. Moving around, even very light, simple movement helps to improve our blood flow and circulation. And when we sit for long periods of time, our blood doesn't circulate as effectively. It can start to pool in our legs and feet and even lead to blood clots or deep vein thrombosis, which is potentially life-threatening. Also, decreased blood flow affects your blood sugar regulation and your blood pressure, which can put you at risk for type 2 diabetes and high blood pressure. And it's important to note that it really doesn't matter if you work out daily. Even if you get an hour of exercise a day, if you spend eight hours sitting, that risk is still there but it's mitigated by sitting less and splitting up your day with frequent movement breaks. So you don't have to be afraid. You can absolutely manage and decrease your risk just by being intentional about how much you sit. The other big problem with desk sitting is how it affects our musculoskeletal system. All those aches and pains that we get from sitting too long. I'm sure you know exactly what I'm talking about. The main things we notice are rounded shoulders from leaning over the computer, and that indicates to us that the muscles of the back are weak, and subsequently the muscles of the chest tighten up. So you end up with a stiff neck and reduced range of motion in your shoulders and arms. Maybe you've noticed when you lift your arms overhead or you try to do a big arm circle, there's pain or restriction there. And secondly, the muscles of our core tend to get weakened because the chair does all the work for us and holds us up. So we tend to see a lordosis of the low back or a sway back, which comes with having weak abdominals. And then we tend to see weak gluteals. So your the muscles in your buttocks and tight hip flexors or the front of your hips become tight. A lot of people I meet in my personal training practice will have low back pain and noticeably tight hips that really limit their ability to squat or lunge without pinching, or they struggle to hold a plank because their low back gives out on them. And sometimes we even see things like tight calves and plantar fasciitis as a result of desk sitting because those muscles and fascia shorten when they're in that position all day. And the same goes with tennis elbow. Some folks will get pain in the outside part of their elbow as those tendons and ligaments shorten from your arms being bent in a typing position all day. 
Now, maybe, maybe you're not in your head. If you work at a desk, you might be saying, yep, that's me. I feel all of that. So if that's you, this isn't something to judge. It's something to be aware of and then ask, well, what do we want to do about it? And like I said, the syndrome isn't really fixed in the gym. Although, of course, if you enjoy going to the gym, I'd definitely not stop doing that. It's definitely to your benefit to partake in whatever type of physical activity you enjoy. But to really see and feel a difference with these specific problems, you need to address it specifically throughout your workday. And so I've got five simple steps that you can take to mitigate those effects of desk sitting. And of course, the best way to feel better and decrease your risk is to prevent the problems in the first place. So the most effective thing that you can do is to sit less and stand more. If you have access to a standing desk, you can use that. If that's not available to you, there are all kinds of adjustable risers that you can buy online so that you can change the height of your laptop or simply try standing up when you're on the phone or sorting files, or if there's some other task that you do regularly that doesn't have to happen while seated, use that as an opportunity to get up and stand. Whenever we're trying to create a habit, if we try to anchor the new habit to something that's already established, it's a lot easier to make that habit stick. So if there's something that you already do every day, like reading email, use that daily task as your opportunity to stand up and start small. If you're used to sitting all day, you might be surprised how adding even small amounts of standing does make you feel better, but also could be a bit of an adjustment for your muscles. And you don't want to set yourself up for being sore and fatigued because then you won't stick with this new habit. So try even five minutes in the morning and five minutes in the afternoon and work up from there. My second tip is when you do have to sit to correct your posture and use good ergonomics. So if you have an adjustable chair, set the height of it so that when you're sitting with your feet flat on the floor, your knees are at the same level as your hips. In other words, your thighs should be parallel to the floor and keep your feet flat on the floor. No crossing your legs as that puts unnecessary strain on your back and hips. So sit up tall. Roll the shoulders back and engage the muscles of your core. Try drawing your navel in towards your spine and engaging your abdominal muscles. And this is where sitting on a ball can be really effective and helpful. It's what I call active sitting because you have no choice but to engage your core and your upper back. They have to be engaged at all times or you're going to roll off the ball. So whatever you sit on, sit up tall and engage the core and roll those shoulders back. Look straight ahead. Try to keep your computer at the same level as your eyes so that you're not having to look down or up to see your computer and try keeping your head stacked right above your shoulders. We have this tendency to push our head forward to get closer to the screen. So watch that because it puts a lot of strain on the muscles of the neck. Sometimes bringing the head back into alignment is simply an issue of mindfulness. Like you just check in and notice and make that correction. But other times it can be a vision related thing. So if you're moving closer to the screen because you can't see well enough, in that case, you need to go speak to your optometrist and maybe get corrective lenses or blue light lenses on that note can be really helpful too to reduce the strain on our eyes from looking at the screen all day. My third tip is take your lunch break, (laughs) take a break. I don't know how many people I meet who work right through lunch or work all day long and forget to take a break to eat. So important that you give your mind and body a break and nourish and hydrate yourself and also give yourself a solid break from your screens and rest your mind. I don't care how important your job is. You're going to be so much more effective at it if you are fed and hydrated and have taken even just a few minutes to clear your mind above and beyond. If you can try to get outside for even five or 10 minutes for a short walk outdoors, it'll do wonders 
to not only counteract the effects of sitting, but the fresh air and sunshine will go a long way to lift your mood and recharge your brain. Don't even think about letting all or nothing mentality come in here and convince you that 10 minutes of walking is not enough. So why bother? It's not worth it. Or that walking doesn't count. I'm telling you, even a short, brisk walk has so many benefits. It's going to get your blood circulating more effectively, which is really important as we talked about that stagnation and how it's linked with high blood pressure and cardiovascular issues. And it's also going to loosen up those tight muscles that have been stationary for the first half of the day. You can open up your chest and relieve the muscles in your back. And it's going to go a long way to strengthening your legs and activating your core. Even small doses of walking are definitely worth it. So I encourage you to really try it and see how you feel. Tip number four is to use a timer or an activity tracker to remind you to get up once an hour. Now, myself, I'm not a big fan of activity trackers. I recorded a whole episode on the use of activity trackers and how they can really put us into a mindset of using exercise to earn and burn food and comparing ourselves to others, being competitive. So for those reasons, I myself don't wear one. But if you don't have that history, that type of relationship with an activity tracker, then it could be really helpful and come in handy to remind you to get up and move. And if you do have an issue with trackers like I do, you can just put a timer on your computer or your phone. It does the same thing. But what I'm saying is if you're the type of person who gets lost in your work or forgets to look up for hours on end, having some sort of reminder can be really helpful to get you out of that zone and back into your body. So set a timer for each hour. And do your best to listen to it when it goes off. I know that it can be easy to just silence it and finish that thing that you're doing and think that you're going to come back to that and get up in a few minutes. But often we forget, we get onto the next train of thought and we forget to do it. So when the timer goes off, try to listen. And when it does go off, I encourage you to do a body check-in. So what I do is I close my laptop, take my eyes off my work, stand up, And take a few deep breaths in through the nose, out through the nose or mouth and scan my body head to toe and take notice of how I'm feeling mentally, physically from head to toe. And then I ask myself what I need in that moment. So sometimes that's to take a short walk to get some water or a snack or a quick bathroom break, or maybe my body's feeling stiff and sore and it's asking for a quick stretch, maybe some shoulder rolls, a little back bend, some standing twists. I like to do hip circles or even like cat cows with my hands on my desktop to get my spine moving. Basically, I try to do the opposite of what I've been doing, right? If sitting equals all hunched over and constricted, then my movement, my stretch is usually about opening everything up. And sometimes my body asks for something a little more active, like maybe some jumping jacks or dancing if I really need to get blood flowing and my energy and creativity up. So set your timer once an hour and do a check-in with your body. Tip five is to do some targeted mobility exercises either during your workday, if you have the opportunity to take five or 10 minutes to get down on the floor and stretch, or it can be outside of your workday before or after. Either way, some targeted mobility and strengthening exercises that specifically counteract the effects of desk sitting will go a long way. So as we said at the beginning, the four main imbalances that we get from desk sitting are rounded shoulders, weak core, and low back pain caused by weakness in the low back and tight hips. So we want to focus our efforts on correcting our posture, strengthening the upper back and stretching the front of the shoulders, having an elastic band and doing pull aparts are a really great exercise. They help to strengthen the back and open the front of the body. And then as far as tight hips go, it's We want to stretch into our hip flexors and do things that are going to help improve our hip mobility, like bridges, donkey kicks, fire hydrants, to strengthen up the back part of our hips, the glutes. 
And then of course, to improve our core strength and the strength of our low back, we want to do some work on our deep abdominal muscles and the erector spinae, the muscles that run up parallel to our spine. So planks are awesome. Bird dogs are fantastic for strengthening our back. Supermans or swimmers. And you can YouTube any of these that I'm mentioning. They might all sound like gobbledygook to you, but these are well-known exercises. That if you wrote down the words that I said, you will be able to find those on YouTube and watch videos on how to perform each of these exercises. It doesn't have to be a lot, you know, five or 10 minutes of a day with one or two movements for each of these parts of your body will go a long way to mitigate those effects of death sitting. So to recap those five tips to add more movement into your workday and counteract the effects of death sitting are number one, stand more, use a standing desk or stand while you're on the phone or doing other daily tasks that can be done standing. Number two, correct your posture when you are sitting. Number three, take a lunch break, take at least a 30 to 60 minute break in the middle of your day to nourish yourself and try to get outdoors for a short walk. Number four, set a timer to get up from your desk every hour and stretch or move in whatever way your body needs at that moment. And number five is to do some targeted mobility and strengthening exercises to address all of those weaknesses and imbalance that are directly impacted by sitting. And like I said, you can find examples of those exercises on YouTube, or you can come and join us inside the What Moves Me membership. Our functional movement experiment for October will be to add more movement into our work days. As a community, we'll be practicing these five strategies together, and I'll be sharing videos with targeted mobility and strength training exercises specifically made to counteract the effects of sitting. And also I do have videos for folks who work on their feet because that comes with its own set of challenges. So not to leave those people out. So I'm going to show you exactly how to perform all of those movements that I've talked about here on the show today and a whole bunch more explaining exactly how each one works and how it benefits your body. That's a value of mine when I'm teaching movement is to really explain how each movement benefits you. So you know why you're doing what you're doing and not just going through the motions and doing what I say, because I said so. And then in addition to that, each month inside the memberships, there's also a mindset piece where we explore our deeper relationship to movement. And the focus for the month of October is going to be attunement, which is the skill of tuning into your body to assess how you feel and then listening to your body's signals to choose movement that'll help you feel and function your best. So we'll be practicing that as well. And of course, I'm there supporting and coaching you all the way. So come and join us. We've got a really supportive, welcoming community where everybody's encouraged to go at their own pace and choose their own adventure. It's a super safe environment for anyone who feels intimidated by gyms or that like fitness classes just aren't their thing, but really wants to get moving in an effective and sustainable way. So the link for the membership is in the show notes, which can be found at radiantvitality.ca slash JMS 88. And if that sounds like something that you need in your life, I would love to work with you inside the What Moves Me membership. But otherwise, I hope that this episode has inspired you with some simple strategies to help you add a little more movement into your workday so that you feel better, you feel less achy and less wiped out at the end of the day. I'd really love to hear how it goes for you. Feel free to message me on my social channels if you found these tips helpful. I'm at Radiant Vitality Wellness on Instagram, Facebook, and also TikTok. I'll see you back here next week for more Fitspo free motivation. And in the meantime, be well, and here's to your radiant vitality.